Okay, I'm here with Washington, who is about a one and a half year old German Shepherd, and he's a little bit territorial. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can teach your dog to have some good door manners, as a matter of fact, to move away from the door. Now, um, I just did this yesterday with a really nice client uh, in Malibu who has six dogs, and when they ring the doorbell, the dogs freak out. So um, uh, I have a desensitization protocol for this. What you would do is, I'm just gonna describe that first because there was a doorbell here and that gets him really worked up. Um, so what we would do is I would have somebody outside maybe talking to them on Bluetooth. And what I would do is first of all, is I would say, now if you're watching this and you know what you're doing, a lot of people watch my videos like, he's doing it wrong. This is a version of counter conditioning. So what I would do is I would first of all, I would give him a treat and then I, and I would take one of these treats and I'd smash it. So he's getting a couple nibbles, it takes longer. There you go, buddy, you can get it all. Yes, good job, there you go. A little bit more. So I'm doing the first couple without any stimulus happening because you saw he was a little bit off. He doesn't understand how to get this one. Very good, yeah, you got a good soft mouth, buddy. I like it. Yes, there you go. Okay, so the idea is I'm gonna give him a treat and then ring the doorbell. Now your chime box is usually somewhere close by. If it is, somebody might muffle. If he, if you, if if when you ring the doorbell, he charges the door. Then I would practice maybe in the, in your farther away in your room, uh, a room further away from the door, not from the door, from the chime box that the bell doorbell comes from. Or I would cover it up with a pillow. We want to lower the intensity of it. So the first couple times, what I want to do is I want to give him a treat and ring the bell, and so that the treats kind of keep him here instead of chasing around. I do that two to four or five times. The next step is what I would do is I would sit and I'd have somebody ring the bell. And again, it's muffled. And after the bell rings, it's okay, buddy. Then I would give him the treat. So now the bell is an indicator I'm about to get a treat. Instead of meaning the bell means an indicator somebody's coming inside, it means I'm getting a reward. So that's one of the, th the tips that I, uh, little tricks to this exercise. I'm gonna show you the other, the rest of the exercise right now. Um, but if you have a dog that reacts to the doorbell or, and if it re reacts to knocks, and every once in a while, when nobody's at the door. And then he runs the door and barks and growls, but nobody comes in, so it doesn't get validated, and you guys don't get up to answer the door. After you do that enough, he's like, knocks just, and sometimes the house creaks. And it's the same thing with the doorbell. Now the doorbell, you can actually teach the dog to go over here, and I'm gonna just show you some other stuff, but if you wanna teach the dog to do, to go there away when it hears the doorbell, what you would do is you would have, be standing over there in the place where you want her to be, and he's there, and basically you would drop a treat on the ground, and then the person would ring the doorbell now. So when the doorbell rings, he's there. Now he's probably gonna run over here, so you do this with the door closed and you have a Bluetooth in. And so he runs there, but you stand over there. And he's like, ah, 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 not coming. No, he's coming in. Okay, and then he comes back over to you. You drop another one, then ring the doorbell. You keep on doing that until when you drop it and ring the doorbell, he stays there. The next stage is when we switch it, which is the appropriate way to do it. So now I would have them ring the doorbell. He's gonna stay there because we just practiced that. And then when he stays there, ding dong. So you can take it, buddy. He's a little bit off his game. We just got done going over how to disagree. I think there's some residual for that. Uh, so now the doorbell means if I run there, I get a treat. So if you do that and you rep this enough without somebody actually coming through the door, doorbell, he runs away for you. So I always want to create a scenario where the dog does what we want willingly before. I don't want ever want to use force or punishment or any corrections. I just want to create a scenario where he wants to go there. Okay, so let's say that we've done the doorbell thing and he uh, naturally goes there, but he's still inclined to want to come here. So once you, let's say we're in the back room, doorbell rings, he runs over there, and then you come up from the back room, as soon as you pass him, he kind of follows you back here. Well, if I answer the door with him in front of me, then he thinks I'm assisting him. Whoever's in charge is leader. You can come a little closer if it would help. Um, so what I would do is at this point, then I would, and when he goes over there and you drop the treat, you might want to come up with a command word like reservations, like I was talking about earlier. So you could say reservations and he goes back over there. Now, answering the door, we link it as one step. There's actually a whole lot of little steps. And as a dog behaviorist, what I try to do is I try to, when a dog fails and doesn't behave the way that we want for an activity, I ask myself first, I ask the client, have you taught the dog how you want it to behave when people come through the door? And we're like, yeah, I don't want to bite anybody. Well, have you taught him that? We never do. So the way we teach that is I break the activity down into small individual steps. This is normally not here, it's here because we're setting up the Christmas tree. I always say we, as if I'm moving in everywhere I go. Um, so basically, when I come to the door, so first of all, he's here, I'd say reservations, whatever the word is, and he runs back over there. 
If he doesn't, I can use the escalating consequences and march towards him kind of like this. Sit. He's sad, so I'm gonna give him a treat for that. Normally I, I wouldn't, I would just march him back all the way there. But again, I always want the dog to do the work first. So now remember your authority goes whatever direction your hips are pointing. So he sits, I take a step backwards. Comes forward, I take a step forward is my way of saying no. So I'm gonna say right now that he's not allowed to cross this line. He sits, I take a step backwards. He didn't cross the line, so I didn't react. I take another step backwards. And noticing I'm pausing between each step backwards and I'm keeping my hips pointed towards him. If I go like this and there's somebody here, he's going to run right up behind me. So now I'm, with my hips pointed towards him, I want to recreate all the sounds that are associated with opening the door. So the first one is this one. See how he snapped his head around? So I'm going to make it as noisy as possible. And what I'm teaching him is I want you to stay in that position while you hear this sound. Now again, this is best to do with at first without without anybody there. So when he lost on what he was supposed to do, make sure he's in the shot if you can, that I immediately stopped what I'm doing and correct and gave him instruction of what I wanted. I take a step backwards again, I pause. Step backwards again, I pause. Once you do about three or five of them, if he stays where you're at, you're ready to go to the next step. The next step is the deadbolt. This normally causes the dog to rush forward. So we're just saying, when you hear the sound, because the sound is associated with somebody coming in. It's, what, it's a precursor. So we help him practice that without anybody there and teaching him, this is what I want you to do, is stay right there. Once I've done this several times, he stays there, and then I go to the next one. And I want to do each sound as noisy as I possibly can. I want to make it the hardest version possible when we're practicing. See, I just lean forward a little. Then I jiggle without opening the door. Get good action in your door, so put your foot there. So now when I'm going to open it, I do a shift. I shift here, so I'm going to get my authorities pointing toward him. His paws across the line, but he's respecting the spirit of the law, so I'm allowing that. Then I open it a crack. Well, actually, usually, I've been doing this for a while. Usually what I do is I open it a crack here, then I step back over here, and I would normally, this would be easier with her, I open it all the way, and I'm standing, now I'm in front of the door. And I, and I back up one more step. Now he's gonna see the person once this door opens. If he comes forward, you stop what you're doing, rush toward him, be happy to, close the door, and move him back. Now that was a little bit softer than what I want you to do. I want you to be almost racing towards him. He's a little bit unsettled, so I'm using kind of gentler language right now because he's such a sweet boy and this is just a demo. But for you, have some good, and, and, uh, uh, good momentum. And he cannot pass this line. Take a step backwards, pause. over here step back in it jiggle this one then when I open it I'm going to ask my friend come in and please stay behind me I'm going to step forward and vacate the area the friend is staying right there and then I'm going to close the door now if it's let's say it's a family member a loved one I want to kiss them or if I kiss them I'm turning my head but everything below the neck is projected towards the dog if I'm going to hug them above the neck is turned toward the dog and I hug them so either way, either above or below the neck is projected towards the dog. And the guest stays behind me. The dog is not allowed to interact with the guest until the guest crosses that threshold. So if you have to come over and oh, I'm afraid of German Shepherds, that's all right, he's not allowed to cross that threshold. Really? Okay. And there's nothing but air between you and the door. Pause. Pause. So he's going to make mistakes. He doesn't know any better. So looking back, you're like, whoa. What am I supposed to do? This is the first time I've done it. I, didn't, I don't practice things ahead of time when I do these videos. I don't know what the dog's going to do because I want to be able to give the guardians the best response. So again, the process for this is practice. The first step is just practice dropping. I have 10 treats. Drop a treat there and come up with a command word. So now we've assigned a command word. And keep practicing that until you can say reservations or position. Come up with a funny word, you know, uh, that means, you know, something, you know, sentry or whatever it is. So you want to be able to keep on practicing until you say sentry, he runs over and sits down right there. The next step is then you would come over here where one of you are coming home. You're out running some errands, call each other, be on the Bluetooth, be outside the door, and make sure he can't see anything. So, I mean, he can't really see for the new windows that you guys have. And then you're practicing. When you have a real guest, we want to open that door as quickly as we can. We want to be a good host. 
the dog feels all that apprehension and that the amplified thing. If it's your, our partner, they're in it with us. So they don't know, we don't have to rush. And then again, you go through, just like I showed you, breaking down all the individual steps, open the door, and now he gets to do it when it's you guys, when it's an actual guest, now he's warmed up and practiced this several times. And by the time you get done, he should be able to stay there. You go through all the steps here, open the door, your guest comes in, and he's way back there in the kitchen, and your guest can come in, and he's not allowed to interact with the guest until the guest crosses the threshold of where that line is where the carpet is. So a guest can come in here, sit down, have a chat with you guys, he's not allowed to come in. And so again, it's an opportunity for him to practice a little self-control. Come here, buddy. This is Washington, named after our greatest president. You want to take it? I'll give you that one. I, don't, I would normally say the command word of what he's doing, but that's just a good reinforcement because he's such a good boy. Uh, but if he practices enough, eventually the doorbell rings, he'll run over there. You go over and answer the door. You don't have to worry about keeping your hips there. But at first when you're practicing, it, keep your hips towards him until he sits or lies down there. And you can turn. When you turn the first couple times, watch him out of the corner of your eye. I sometimes put a little mirror here so you can go here and I can see. So that's exactly how you're going to respond. But if you practice this right with each other, then I would arrange to have friends. Neighbors are great if they're comfortable with you and the dog. But when you bring his buddy over, ask them, hey, before you bring the dog up, can you come and knock at the door? Recreate that situation when you're ready for it. Before you knock at the door, though, can you text us? Oh, you're on your way? I'm going to take the dog out and exercise for 10 minutes outside back, give the dog 10 minutes of cover before we practice that. That's a nice way to set them up for success. Or even if you don't need to exercise it, they let you know. You know who it is behind the door. You don't have to worry about that. Let's see if you'll stop right at the edge. No, it didn't stop at the edge, but stopped even further, greater away from the edge. Well, this is Washington. I'm David. And these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that doesn't behave very well at the door.